welcome back to my unarmed Nodiatus build. I found out a couple new things, so I decided to make a video about it. It seems that the cap for each hit of unarmed damage, the capped damage for unarmed hit, rises with my level. So if it does fall off in damage compared to the uh, HP of the mobs that I'm going to be fighting, it'll fall off very slowly in light of my damage increasing with my level. And if I keep training strength, then my average damage will just get higher and higher. Of course, limited by my max damage. But, from what I've seen, seeing as I have over 200 strength now, 202, including the bonuses from my equipment, I don't often see less than 10 damage for my hits. See, they're all well above 10 damage. So that brings the average up by quite a bit. This one hits for 17. I see 18 and a bit. So, the way I found this out, that my max damage increases by level, is that over the entire time that I was level 15 with my unarmed build, I was seeing a maximum of 16 damage per hit, and there is an 18 right there. But as soon as I gained a level, as soon as I became level 16, I did 18 damage as my maximum hit per hit number. And that's a jump by two. Seems quite significant. I don't remember seeing such a big jump by gaining any other levels, so maybe the formula is a bit convoluted. It's not like a easy to discover formula. Like for every level I gain two maximum damage. It seems to be some kind of really convoluted percentage increase. So from 15 to 16 it seems like I gained 2 to my max damage. But that probably won't happen again. Maybe even for another 15 levels or so. <laughs> and for every level until then it'll just increase by 1, if even that. So it seems like it'll increase by at least 1. Since by increasing 2 from 15 to 16 the percentage increase must be, uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's, it'll guarantee, most likely, that it'll increase by a maximum damage of one, at least one by every level. Turn on my backwards video, backwards video is my favorite. <laughs> Oh yeah, and one interesting, interesting thing that I noticed is that when these guys weren't in their in their party and they were fighting, uh, both fighting spike varks here, my unarmed build actually finished its battle a couple seconds earlier than my archer build. To be fair, my archer build doesn't have uh, very updated uh, archer equipment. It just has this little 17 bow and a little 20. 20 archery bow, 17 quiver, and archery 13 arrow. But if archery really is that much better than unarmed, it should always outperform unarmed, which it doesn't just by straight damage alone. And I have gotten a few skills for archery as well, and training them up poison arrow and shaft of death. They seem to work, and they seem to have great synergy together. But it looks like if I don't get a shaft of death, then my unarmed damage outclasses my range damage. I'm working on increasing archery for my archer here, so I can get the archery 23 bow. And I'll see what it looks like after that. <laughs> 
that that most likely will outclass unarmed. But either way, this gives me hope that I could likely reach maximum level solo as an arm. Of course, as you know, I notice now, I'm in my party with my archer here. Because it's just plain faster to gain experience due to... Uh, what's it called? Group acumen. The battles go by faster. I don't even have to worry about waiting for my HP to heal up. So you're always in the battle nearly full HP. And I turned off auto cast for the gems because every time gem is, every time a gem is used at the end of a battle, it makes a cooldown, and I can't really click the exit battle until that quick flash of cooldown goes away. So I realized that if I just turn off auto cast, then I'll always be able to end the battle immediately once I kill the enemy. And that does save some time. And if, if it does seem like it's not, you know, fair for me to party while doing this unarmed build, really, the main reason I'm doing this unarmed build is to find out everything about it so that people will know what it's all about. I'm not doing it really as some kind of challenge build. I'm not following, not following rules that will limit me in any way, except for just not equipping a weapon. That's the only limit. And my hope is that it turns, it will turn out to not even really be a limit. This unarmed damage is viable if you build it correctly. And by correctly, I mean give it lots of strength, lots of agility, and some more magic survivability, because I've been seeing the magic damage from a lot of the mobs had uh, increased dramatically, and killing me really quickly, but now that I've increased contravention, that's uh, become a lot more manageable. And I'm about to put on, uh, let's see, where is it? This gem here, oh, I can't reach it. Hold on. There, the blue resistance R rank one. It'll give me five percent more magic resistance according to our contravention, I believe. And so after that, I'll be resisting a lot more dazes and stuns and mesmerizes. And I think I noticed that whenever I resist those, I don't even take damage from them, so this will help a lot with my survivability overall. A while back, I decided to start playing Odiatus again, because the grind got really tedious in the other game I play. So, even though I still play the other game, I'm also playing Nodiatis. And the reason why I chose to play Nodiatis is because of this auto battle system. You don't really have to look at the screen a whole lot. So that's, that's the explanation why I don't really notice a lot of things that's going on, because I don't stare at the screen where Nodiatis is. I'm staring at my phone, which has uh, the other game, Hero of Aetheric, that I play as my main game. That's why I notice certain things very slowly. The main thing I do pay attention to, is, though, is my max damage that my hits are doing. And of course, how much HP I have left. That's basic. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that when I'm at a party, though, so it helps me concentrate more on my game on my phone. <clears throat> Although, I was thinking about getting another unarmed uh, account and getting it up to catch up with my my two accounts here so that I can have a 
party of three. And even better than that, I was thinking about getting two of them up so I could have a party of only unarmed characters. All the punching sounds on that would be pretty funny, I'll bet. <laughs> so many punching sounds. And the missing sounds will probably be deafening <laughs> when I miss the attacks. <laughs> Double 18, very nice. That was about half the damage of my main account's crit right there. Total, the total damage I did that round. So the main upsides, or the main upside of unarmed is the consistent damage. And with a ton of strength, my minimum damage tends to not show itself as often. I usually get above 10. There's a couple low ones, 6 and 8, but I've never seen one since I began increasing my strength by this much. I've never seen a 1 or a 2. The damage remains consistently high, and I often see my max damage. It seems like it governs my my damage curve a lot better as unarmed than Dex does. Uh, what is it? Than Dex does for my ranged. There it is. See, my range is uh, my Dex is 180, but I constantly see super low damage numbers for my uh, my bow attacks, which is weird. So unarmed does have a lot more consistent damage. And once I get a rune that gives me critical chance, I'll be seeing lots of crits too. That's pretty much all I had to talk about right now. I'll let y'all go. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.